Now, amid renewed calls to pardon self-exiled U.S. whistleblower Edward Snowden, one newspaper has taken a different stand. The Washington Post has published an editorial calling for the prosecution of the former NSA contractor whose leaks revealed America was snooping on its citizens. Hypocritical, and it certainly goes against their obligations as a publisher to receive these documents from a source, to publish those documents, to receive an award for those publications, and then call for the prosecution of their source. This is against freedom of expression and against a democratic newspaper's role. After all, Mr. Snowden gave these documents to the Washington Post and it was they who made the decision to publish them. Unfortunately, there's been a significant crackdown on whistleblowers during the Obama presidency, which is quite surprising given that, for example, the Department of Justice decided not to investigate Hillary Clinton for the release of her classified information or the use of her private email server for classified information. So it has been a double standard as compared to what the government does regarding its own releases and its attitude towards whistleblowers for attempting to bring critical information. Well, we contacted the Washington Post about this, but they replied that no one was available to comment on the issue. Britain's Guardian newspaper, which also published Snowden's leaked documents, released an article in his defence saying it would be wrong to prosecute him. They argue that the Espionage Act, which Snowden is charged under, doesn't allow him to explain to the jury his motive for leaking the information. Here's the take of RT show watching the Hawks on the issue too. Their entire foundation of who they are to, to American politics is the checks and balances, the people who will do that, not stand up and throw their own whistleblower under the bus. It's, it's really incredible. Um, three out of the four media outlets, uh, The Guardian, New York Times, The Intercept, have all backed the idea that Snowden should be pardoned or, or come home and not face consequences for his actions, except the Wash Post. It's it was Snowden. interesting that the intelligence committee puts out this report saying they're condemning Snowden, and then like within two days, here comes the Washington Post. It's, it's bizarre. Mm -hmm. It's certainly, well, it's bizarre. <laughs> but the, it's more bizarre to me, as you're pointing out. The Washington Post is here denouncing their own whistleblower, but here they also published the documents, yeah, right? They actually, they're the ones who did it. Right, they put this evidence out there and then they're saying, well, this is criminal. But yeah. aren't they the criminals because they actually put this out there? That's really what baffles me in this whole commentary. Meanwhile, Amnesty International and the American Civil Liberties Movement are leading a campaign called Pardon Snowden. Its launch coincided with the release of a Hollywood movie about the former CIA employee. Modern battlefield is everywhere. How is this all possible? Think of it as a Google search, except instead of searching only what people make public, we're also looking at everything they don't. I didn't know about your conversations. What is this? Leave that there. Are they watching us? I'm 29 years old. Well, the film features an all-star lineup and tells the story of how Snowden made his revelations. RT America talked to Academy Award winner Oliver Stone, who directed the film. Everybody come for me. And now that we've made contact. <laughs> He's one of the few people who spoke up in this whole time period. There's only several, three, four, five people who have spoken up about the NSA. They've all gotten into some degree of trouble. So this is a very secret government issue. Very secret. Top secret. He's had a lot of guts. Cyber warfare, from what I've learned from the Snowden movie, takes a lot of time to figure out who did what to who. Sometimes months. So no one has the patience in this crazy cycle. It's easier to point to the enemy as, a, as the instigator of the leak, but consider uh, the nature of the leak was about misbehavior at the DNC, which four, four major officials resigned for that reason. So there was a serious issue here about blocking the campaign of Bernie Sanders. The press kind of just jumps over that, but Sanders was denied the nomination in a supposedly democratic society. That's what they're sort of hinting at, and that's what the investigation was about. 